This video we're going to talk about shortcuts to using our favorite equation of f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the n. There's a couple shortcuts that have been developed by people in the engineering economy. One of them is looking at um, some patterns associated with the, um, the cash flows and the second is looking up some values in a table so that you don't have to um, actually do a bunch of the complex calculations. Uh, we're going to first, the first one we're going to look about, look at are the patterns, the shortcut in the cash flow patterns. So there's two, one is an equal annual payment and the other is a gradient. It's, um, I think it's interesting to me to think about these kinds of things that are shortcuts. I think they were often developed before we had computers. Um, and, it w and so sometimes, this little thing I have written here, these shortcuts are important before we had computers because it was so hard to do calculations. As a side note, though, I wonder how much of what we teach in engineering is obsolete like this um, because you mostly can do a lot of this stuff um, in, well, in, in the case of engineering economy, you can do it in Excel. But, you know, there's a no lot of other um, really powerful computational packages and I, I sometimes wonder about um, what we teach in engineering but anyway that's okay you will need this if you ever need to want to take the FE exam that's one reason you'll need to know about these sh cash flow shortcuts um, patterns okay so the first one we're going to look at is uniform annual cash flows and this is when there's an equal payment that is occurring every year for n number of years and actually it's really quite useful in a lot of calculations in for personal finance so we'll go over some of those examples one of the important things though you need to know is about the definition of the shape of this cash flow it's important to remember that the first cash flow occurs in year one and continues for every year in till year n. So it doesn't occur, occur at time period zero. It happens at the end of the first year. That's important to remember. The other cash flow pattern that we'll be looking at is um, gradient, where it's increasing at a, a value g each year. One of the things to remember here is in the first year, it's zero. The cash flow in this cash flow pattern is zero. The second year it's G, the third year it's 2G, and then it'll c continue on for every year until N years, increasing by amount of G each year. So let's look at the um, uniform annual cash flow patterns and look at one of the things you can do. So we can look at some shortcuts associated with finding the A value given a P value. So if you have an initial value, you can find out what the um, equivalent annual numbers. This is used in determining a loan payment. And that's really important for you in, in if you're ever going to get a, a mortgage or you're going to borrow money on a car. This will give you the calculation to calculate the payment. Another one is finding P given A. So in this case, you might want to find out how much money you can borrow if you have a certain payment that you can afford. So let's say I can afford $200, how much can I borrow at a certain percent interest rate? Again, personal finance issues are important here. The next is finding the future value given equal annual payments. So you might want to find out how much, um, you'll, how much you will have in the future if you deposit consistently over time. I'm going to just put $100 in every month. My bank account, how much will I have at the end of a certain time period? Um, the other is finding A given F. So determine you want some lump sum at the end. Think, well, how much, am I sp how much will I have to, or should I deposit each year in order to get that amount? So we'll look at some equations associated with this. So for the F given A equations, um, in any engineering economy book, they'll go through the derivation of this. Um, although I love this kind of stuff, I love algebra, I love doing this, I'm, I'm not going to go through that with you. It is in any engineering economy book if you're interested. But you can um, find F given A by multiplying this out or find A given F. Um, by doing this and then in the p-values these are the equations uh, every engineering economy books will have these equations in the f like the beginning of the book um, they'll have them all in one place you also can sort of start collecting these equations if you want um, let's go through an example so that we can look at for finding f given a so in this case you want to find how much you will have um, you will have consistently in the bank in the future if you deposit in the bank in the future if you deposit consistently. So how much we have in the future if you deposit a certain amount every day? 
every month. So the question, a question would be, how much will you have at retirement in 45 years if you deposit $3,000 into your retirement account each year and you'll expect to earn 10% interest? So this is a picture of the cash flow pattern. You're de- going to be depositing this much in the bank. How much, what, what's an equivalent amount in the, F, the future time period? Um, we're going to use this equation, F is equal to A times 1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. So that's the equation. Plugging it in, it's not very difficult. Actually, what's really awesome is you'll have $2.1 million if you make 10% interest. That's a lot of money. That's pretty cool. So this equation is um, finding the A given an F future value to determine how much you should deposit periodically to receive a sem- lump sum. So how much should you deposit each year in for 10 years in order to have $20,000 for a down payment on your home? You earn 8% interest. So in this case, we're looking at we don't know the A value. We want to know how much you need to deposit for 10 years in order to get $20,000. So this equation, A is equal to F, so we want to know the um, the annual value given this future requirement, um, plugging it in at 8% gives us $1,381. So if we put away a, a $1,381, we'll have enough for a down payment in 10 years. So the next thing we're going to look at is we want to find out how much we can borrow for a given payment. Let's say you want to buy a car and you feel a payment of $400 is reasonable for your budget. And you have $2,000 to put down on the car. If an uh, interest rate of 2% a month um, for a four-year loan, how expensive the car? That two percent a month is actually quite a lot for a car. So let's just keep that in mind. Maybe a, a car is not what you'll do. But anyway, you want to know how expensive the car can be. So this is what we do: an interest rate of two percent a month for forty-eight months um, at four hundred dollars a month. And we want to know what is the present value of this. So um, we can make a loan of uh, twelve, almost twelve thousand dollars plus a two thousand dollars down. Would we means that we could buy a car for about. Um, Fourteen thousand um, dollars with a four hundred dollars a month payment. Then the last one is finding A given P, where this is very common. Kind of finding a loan payment. Um, we want we um, what will your credit card payment be for a one thousand dollar computer um, that you just bought? The interest rate is two and a half percent, and you will be paying off in three. This is two and a half percent per month, and you'll be paying off in thirty six months. So this is what it would look like, 2.5% a month, 36 months, $1,000. We use this equation to do the calculations and um, plug it in there, and we get $42 a month. So for $1,000, for three years, you're going to be pay- spending $42 and $43 a month for that. Okay, so let's look now at the, the other shortcut that we're going to be looking at, which is gradient. So again, we're looking at this gradient. gradient and there's some others, like you can find A given G, but um, the only one that we use very often is finding P given G. So this is, the, this is where you want to determine the value of an increasing payment. So there's an increasing payment of G amount, and you might want to know what the present value. Now, gradients are almost always used in conjunction with an annual cash flow. So when you see a problem, it's often it has an initial value, and then it increases at G amount. Um, so we're going to look at... a uh, a problem where we're going to look at this. We're going to look at this problem of how much should you put in a bank account today if you want to withdraw $50 in one year, $100 in two years, $150 in three years, and increasing each year using a 6%. So we have an initial value of $50, and then it increases by $50 every year for 10 years, and we have a 6% interest rate. So we have this equation. But we also want to recognize that there's an A value of $50 that's occurring. You can see I drew the little bitty arrows there. That's the A value. And then the G value begins in year two. Remember, that's how we defined it. And it's a $50. So we have an A value and we have a G. And we're going to add them all up together. This is sort of my plug and chug calculation. And I get 1848. So I want to put in 1848, and then I can withdraw this amount into the future. Now, what we've covered in this video is we looked at two shortcuts. One is equal annual payments, and the other is gradients. And these are the equations that we established for um, these two shortcuts.